If you want to make wavy hair animation like this, stick around, I'm going to show you how I made this. Now, let me say that there are many ways to animate hair in Blender, depending on your goal. Uh, we can do physics simulations, uh, which I'm going to show you in part two of this topic. And these are useful when you need to have the hair uh, react to stuff like wind or gravity, uh, if you have a scene like that. And they're still great, even though the simulation nodes are in the pipeline for Blender. But uh, those might be a bit uh, overwhelming. We'll see. We can also rig the hair and use the armature to animate the hair curves. Or my favorite, procedural animation using geometry nodes. And that's what I use to animate this. But if geometry nodes is not the thing for you, or you don't want to spend time making this or figuring it out, uh, I've made a hair waving tool that you can find from the links in the description. This is a really fast and easy way to quickly make such stylized hairs wave. Check this out. I have this hairstyle made and it has all these uh, hair curves that I've sculpted. But I'm just gonna add a new test curve over here because it's a bit busy and kind of hard to see what's happening. Now I can just drag and drop my hair waver on top of it. Remember to have your stylized hair edit modifier last. And now if I play the animation, I have this uh, already waving. It's this fast. Now I'll go over the different settings of the modifier to see how we can create uh, what we want. Okay, so first I'm going to increase the strength of the effect to make it more noticeable. We can lower the strength to have it uh, very gently waving. Frequency controls how fine the wave is. It's the frequency or the wavelength. Uh, the two are proportional at constant speeds. Right, if I increase this further, we are starting to see this uh, jaggedness. And we are reaching the limit of the resolution of the curve. If we start to see this, down here I've added a curve subdivision. Uh, you can see it's starting to smooth it up. If I increase this further, this is uh, pretty alright. So find the lowest setting that looks good to keep the model lighter. But if I use low enough uh, values for frequency, uh, we might not need subdivision. See, it makes no difference. The speed is, well, self-explanatory, uh, but uh, this setting is interesting because uh, you can see when I change it, it sort of snaps to certain values. You can see here, it jumps to the next speed. That's because this uh, loop animation is checked. I've added this because uh, if you want to have a seamless animation, only certain values of the speed will loop. But those values are dependent on the other settings and also the length of the animation and the frame range. So I don't have to guess anything, just leave it checked and it will do it for you. If you don't care about looping, uh, let's say this is in the middle of an animation and there's like a quick uh, gust of air, uh, you can turn this off. And now you have a much finer control over the speed. But for character presentations, uh, it's cool to have this uh, endless looping animation. This also works with these noise settings. There's three of them and they are analogous to the previous three. Except uh, where these produce a regular wave, these have a noisy output. And they add on top of this wave. So let's add some noise and see what happens. You can see it starts to introduce some randomness to the wave. If I increase the noise scale, it's gonna make more finer disturbances. Let's lower the frequency and scale of the wave to see the noise better. Okay, higher noise scales will make a more turbulent look. We can play with the noise speed, uh, which will add on top of the already set speed. We can turn off the regular wave 
and just have a noisy output. And you can see it loops seamlessly too. There's no jumps. Sometimes while testing this, I've got the wave uh, going backwards. Uh, it shouldn't do this, but if it does, I've added this uh, flip direction. See, that's not correct. It waves backwards. This checkbox will flip it. Now, this is waving kind of up and down, and it has picked a random direction with a certain seed. If I cycle through these, see now it's side to side, uh, so you can pick any random direction. Or if you uncheck it, now we can define a custom direction with these x, y, and z. See now it's 1 at z, so it's uh, gonna go up and down. I can introduce some y component, or if I go negative, it's gonna go the other way. That way we can fine tune the direction exactly the way we want it. Or if you want a quick one, just check random and cycle through these and find some you like. Alright, this phase offset setting is uh, it shifts the wave uh, in time. If I copy this curve, they both have the same settings, so they wave in unison. If I want to quickly break this pattern, I can just uh, shift the phase. And it's still the same wave, uh, but it's shifted. Now there's no longer so much a visual similarity between the two. Okay, preserve length. If I turn this off and increase the strength, it can get uh, wild and really stretch the curve. So this preserve length factor will keep the original length of the curve. But if you are animating something stretchy, like uh, something elastic, drop this down and it will stretch more. I do this with here too, uh, just give it a little stretchiness and uh, it will make it a bit more flowy. And finally, this uh, length factor. If we see, it starts to wave from the root and sort of uh, it's waving here as well. If I don't want to have any movement here, I can bring this factor up and it will mute the wave uh, from the root up. So now this is stationary and it's uh, waving only here. And if I bring it up, uh, you can kind of see what's happening. If, for example, there's a tie right here, this uh, doesn't make much sense. So I can bring the factor until uh, it looks right. Kind of like this, right? So this is what this tool can do. Uh, now I'm going to show you how we can use geometry nodes to make wavy hair like this. But all these settings are interdependent on each other to actually produce a good result. Because we can definitely break this. Uh, if I set a really high strength and frequency and add some weird noise levels, this uh, doesn't look any good. So there's a lot of tweaking that goes in and I spent a lot of time fine-tuning this and actually setting up the interdependencies uh, between the different inputs so that it uh, makes the most amount of sensible results and actually be easy and straightforward to use. Uh, you can see how quick this is. So that's what goes into this tool. Uh, and now I'm going to show you the basic ideas of how we can use nodes to make uh, hair curls wave. I'm going to show you the concepts that I use and then you can reverse engineer it uh, if you wish. So I've got this simple setup and I've added these nodes here to make this uh, thickness profile here. They're not interesting, but we can preview this with this uh, viewer node here. And also we can preview values on it uh, too. And it's going to give us feedback on what's actually going on. So I'm going to keep that there. To wave something, unsurprisingly, we're going to use a wave texture. You can also use a math node with a sign function. But uh, this texture has stuff that uh, we have to set up manually for the sign. And this has them already, so we're going to use them. If I preview it, uh, you can see it has these uh, black and white bands going across, uh, but they are not uh, oriented correctly. So we want to map it somehow so that it's correct. 
So we're going to use the spline factor. But we have to tell the factor of what. So a capture attribute of our original geometry. This says get the factor of this curve. Then I'm going to plug the output here and we get this, which is correct. However, just to avoid any problems, uh, instead of this float going to a vector, I'm going to plug a combine XYZ just to have this on the X. Uh, y and Z uh, will be zero, like so. So now in this wave texture, we can change the scale and we can set uh, all the others to zero because we don't need them. And we're going to use the phase offset to animate this. You can see when I change this, the wave flows uh, through the curve. To animate this, you can definitely keyframe this, right? If I insert one, then at the end, uh, put another keyframe and it works. But it's not very good because uh, we can't control this. A much better way is to use a scene time node. And I want to move it with frames. And now if I play, it moves, but it's backwards. So multiply it with negative one. And to control the speed, we multiply again. And this is our speed control. Now back at the wave texture, I'm going to grab the scale and call it frequency. So we have the speed and frequency. Okay. So how do we turn this texture into the geometry waving? We're going to use something called displace hair curves. This is, I believe, a 3.5 thing. So you're going to need the latest version of Blender to use it. And it's actually a group node. It has a bunch of stuff inside. And this comes with Blender. It's actually one of these hair assets. Somewhere in here, there's a displace. There it is, right? It's the same thing. And we can use this uh, displace vector to displace the curve. So if I get our wave texture and plug it in here, well, this is kind of wild. Uh, I'm going to lower the factor. And now you can see what's happening. The white parts are displacing the curve. Uh, the black are not because they are zero. Again, to control the strength of this, uh, we're going to add a multiplier and make a strength control. And I'm going to drop it next to the others. Okay, now, if I go into scope mode now, while previewing this, it's going to crash Blender. It's a bug. Uh, I have to mute this viewer node. And now I can safely go into scope mode. And here we can see where the original curve is. So if I increase the strength, you can see it only increases on one side. That's because this wave texture has a range from 0 to 1. So when we multiply the 0 parts, it's still 0. We have to bring this texture to a range of negative 1 to 1. So when we scale, it goes in both directions. So a map range node before the multiply. And we're going to take this 0 to 1 range and make it minus 1 to 1. So now when I scale, it pushes in both directions. And also it waves around the original curve, not to one side of it. Also, you can see it's waving in a direction that's equally in X, Y, and Z, sort of the diagonal between the three. And we want to set a custom direction. But for that, we need a normalized vector. And what that means is that it has a direction, but a scale of one. The coordinates just point at somewhere, no scaling. We can get this with a vector math, set it to normalize, and this is our direction vector. Then we want to scale that vector, right? Vector math, scale, and we scale it by our wave. So here we can pick the direction. And this is our basic wave. Uh, we can change the frequency, speed, strength, and choose a direction we like. To add randomness to this, we need a noise texture. And we're going to use the same coordinate mapping, uh, like the wave texture. 
uh, but this is too washed out. Uh, we need to add contrast to that. So again, a map range node. And these first two I'm going to bring in like this. And while we are here, let's make the range negative one, two, one. To make it move, uh, we don't have a phase offset, so we have to add to this coordinate. So a vector math, add, and if I uh, add to the X, it will move it. So let's plug our frame here of the scene time, uh, multiply the speed down, let's see, 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 or negative 0.01 to make it flow up. And I'm gonna put another math to be the speed control, okay? Noise speed. So let's see, if we add this to the add wave, add, too strong, uh, we need a strength control, another multiply, and this is gonna be the noise strength. And let's just have the noise scale. To stop it uh, going crazy and have the length preservation, uh, we need to use one of these pre-made hair assets, which is the restore curve segment length. Okay, we plug it after the displacement, and it wants a reference position. This is our curve uh, before it was displaced. So we want to capture its position, right? This says get the position of this curve. Uh, we just have to set it to vector, because position is a vector. And now we use this attribute as the reference position, and it brings it back. And this factor is how much we want from this effect. And this is the basic setup that uh, we can build from. We have a regular wave, a noisy wave with their controls, and we are adding them together to control the scale of a direction vector, which is then used to displace the curve. And from now on, it's a lot of tweaking and setting uh, interdependencies between the different settings, uh, so we can make a finalized modifier. So that's what I did. If you're interested in an easy to use tool like this, uh, go check it out, links in the description. You can use this to animate things uh, other than here. Uh, this could be, I don't know, a horse tail, or a plant, or a tentacle of some alien creature, or parts of clothing, uh, like dangle beads or ribbons, whatever you wish to quickly breathe uh, life into. This is part one. In the next part, I'll show you how we can use physics simulations to animate uh, this sort of hair, right? See you there.